Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here. Welcome to a brand new In The Shop. And we've got some secret tips and modifications for one of the best lures ever created. And today, In The Shop, we're talking about how to modify a chatterbait, a vibration jig. Some changes with the trailer, some changes with the skirt, and some changes with the lip that you can make to help you catch more fish. All right, let me start with an overview with this lure, and then we're gonna get right into some things we can do to make this lure better. Um, and at the end of this too, we're gonna throw you some great tips about line, rod, and reel that will help you catch more fish on a chatterbait. But let me start with this overview. Um, why? Why is this lure so good? Why is the, the bladed jig, why is the chatterbait so good? And, you know, my theory on it and, and a good way to describe it is it's a hybrid lure. A chatterbait to me is part crankbait, right? Vibration. It's got that vibration like a crankbait. It's part jig. Look at the jig head and the skirt on that thing. And it's part spinnerbait all mixed together, right? The flash of that blade, the sound of the blade hitting the head, right? It's all part of the equation. So a chatterbait is so effective because to me it's a hybrid lure. Part crankbait, part jig, part chatterbait, uh, part spinnerbait. You combine those three things, and you've got one of the best fish catchers ever. But over the years of fishing this thing, there are definitely some modifications I've made to help get more fish in the boat, right? To help get 20 bites instead of 15. To help land 30 fish instead of 25, right? These little chatterbait tips and modifications, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Let's start with uh, trailer selection. And trailer selection, I think, is something that is generalized when we're talking about the chatterbait, right? Uh, you know, if you look at the most popular chatterbait trailers, they're kind of these fish-shaped, forked tail-style trailers. Uh, lots and lots of guys using these. Uh, Berkeley has one now called a Power Stinger. It's a great trailer. Of course, other companies like the Zayco are out there. Uh, and a lot of people, I think, assume that that's the only trailer you should ever fish on your chatterbait, okay? That's not true. And I'm gonna, as I'm saying it's not true, I'm going to take that Power Stinger off. And trailer selection on that chatterbait changes the way it moves, changes the way it acts in the water. And the main thing that I want to think about when I'm selecting trailer is water clarity and the activity level of the fish. Okay, so let's go through these trailers and I'm going to show you what's the right one for each situation. Let's start with dirty stained water, dirty stained water and fish that are very active, okay? Um, you know, when we get to a place and you look down and it's muddy, it's got color to it, it's, you know, you drop your lure down, you can't see it past a foot. Um, warm, dirty water when fish are active, dirty stained water. I wanna select a trailer that has presence and action, okay? So I don't want to leave it all up to the blade in dirty stained water. And when fish are super active, I want a trailer that's bigger and has a ton of movement. For sure, my favorites are a chigger crawl and a chigger bug. And both of these have a ton of movement in the water. Um, when you look at the chigger crawl, you can see that compared to most trailers being put on chatterbaits, it's bigger, it's bulkier, it's got these big arms that flap, 
and it provides a lot more presence and rear movement to the lure. That's what I want. Dirty, stained water, active fish, that's what I want. The one difference that I do when I'm rigging my crawl on the back of this, this jigger crawl, I don't rig it flat, right? If you were Texas rigging it, you would rig that lure flat. When I'm rigging it on a vibrating jig, a chatterbait style lure, I rig it sideways, okay? So when I thread that chigger crawl on, and by the way, this is that new Mullox micro chatter that I'm using. I want it rigged sideways. And when I do that, it takes the crawls from being flat and turns them to the side. Once again, dirty stained water. I want a bigger presence in the back and I want bigger movement. And a chigger crawl is perfect for that. All right. Let's get to the middle now. And this is a lot of water that we fish. When the water clarity is stained to lightly stained, right? So not dirty, not muddy, not crystal clear, not clean. Stained, stained water. Moderately stained, marginally stained, has some color to it. Now I drop the lure and I can see three or four foot down, I can see the lure. It's stained. And the fish, they're moderately active. They're not super aggressive and they're not, they're not lock jawed. They're moderately aggressive, moderate. I want to pick a trailer that's moderate action. And my choices for that are yes, that fish shaped bait. That's a power stinger by Berkeley. I love that. It's got a moderate amount of action in the tail. A lot of that action is generated by the bill. Or this is another one of my favorites right here is just a boot tail swim bait. Just a regular old boot tail swim bait. This is a Berkeley Power Swimmer. I really like the 3-3 three, three size uh, as a chatterbait trailer. And the same thing with both these trailers. Just gonna thread that trailer on. A lot of times I might just take a little bit off, maybe, maybe a quarter of an inch off the top. Bite that down just a little bit. And I want to thread that bait on there. And when I do that, I'm going to have a trailer now that has a moderate amount of action behind that chatterbait, right? That vibration blade on the front is moving and that tail's moving in the middle. Not giant like a crawl, just moderately. One little tip when you rig these boot tail style swim baits on this chatterbait is make sure the curve in the boot is facing the opposite direction of the curve of the hook. When that boot is facing down away from the bend of the hook, you're going to get the maximum amount of action. Okay. So stained water, moderately stained water, middle of the road, and then moderately active fish. Fish that aren't lock jawed and fish that aren't busting everywhere. A fish shape or a boot tail swim bait is perfect. All right, last but not least is when the fishing is tight, when the fishing's tough, when the fish are pressured, when there's a cold front, or when the water is clean, clear, to ultra clear, the cleanest water you've ever seen. I need this chatterbait to have no action in the back. When I say that, it's not that the trailer is going to have no action, but the only movement of that trailer is imparted by the bill of the bait, by the lip of that chatterbait, okay? So my two favorite there are just a good old minnow style bait, four inch minnow style bait. And this is, um, this is the Berkeley power bait, uh, uh, flat nose minnow four inches. And again, when I thread that on, I'll even thread this on for you real quick before I show you the other one. When I thread that one on and I thread it on just regular like that, the only action in that tail is going to be because of that blade, right? So it's got the least amount of tail action out of the three. And when the fishing's tough, when the water's ultra clear, that's what I want. 
All right, last but not least, I love a thin-tailed worm on the back. This one's really, really a sleeper, guys. A lot of different thin type of worms on the market. This one is really cool. This one is the Berkeley Powerbait Flute Worm. All I'm going to do, and by the way, this is the, the four inch. All I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that thing right there about just above the middle. I'm going to get rid of that top section. And when I thread this thing on, all I've got, just like that minnow tail, watch this. All I've got is this little thin tail in the back with no action on its own. But as you reel that bait, that blade will activate that tail just a little bit. And for clear water pressured fish, that's what we want. Okay. So three kinds of trailers for three different activity levels of fish and three different water clarities. Super, super key. All right. Let's talk about the movement of the bait. Okay, out of the pack, if we throw a chatterbait and never do anything to the skirt, never touch the skirt at all, that chatterbait's going to come through pretty straight and steady, okay? But there are times when I want that chatterbait to hunt. And when I say hunt, um, that means that the chatterbait doesn't track straight, but I actually want that chatterbait to get off center a little bit. And we can do that by modifying the skirt. Before I show you how to do that, when do we want that chatterbait to run off center? And the right answer for that is when there's a lot of fishing pressure. Um, you know, tournaments now, uh, weekends, Load it with people. A lot of people fishing a chatterbait. And they're getting conditioned to that bait running straight. So by thinning out the skirt and adding one of these neutral action trailers, and I'll thread it back on for you, I can get this chatterbait to hunt. It's a key modification when there's a lot of fishing pressure. And again, it's a modification that can make you catch 30 instead of 15. It's going to help you get more bites when the fishing's tough. There's a lot of pressure. And all we're going to do is we're going to take about 30% of the skirt out of that material. Um, there's no exact gauge. And I'm, you don't even have to use the scissors. I'm literally pulling skirt material out. I just pull it out with my finger. And as I pull it out, I try to do it as I'm going around the bait. So I try to pull it out from different parts of the skirt. So it's not all out of one spot, right? Kind of going 360 around it and I'm really guesstimating and that number I like is about 30% of the skirt material out of there, right? So not half, about 30%, 35%. And by pulling that skirt material out, I've reduced the drag. I've reduced the straight tracking of that bait. So when I take 30% of the skirt material out and I pair it with a neutral action trailer, remember what we said, tough fishing, right? Lockjawed fish, clear water, a neutral action trailer, right? There's that flute worm again, that fin tail worm on the back. When I do that, I change the movement of that chatterbait to go left and right and to hunt. Key modification, super easy to do it by pulling material out of the skirt and adding a no action trailer. All right, last set of modifications for you guys. Uh, and once again, I'll give it to you based on uh, water clarity and this time water temperature. Is I can change how hard a chatterbait vibrates simply by adjusting the bill, the lip of a chatterbait. It's one of the great things with a metal lip that you can do is change on the fly. I can't make the same modification with a crankbait. I actually have to change the crankbait. But with a chatterbait, I can adjust the action just with a pair of pliers, okay? And 
Basically, I'm going to give it to you in three groups, just like I did earlier, this time by water clarity and water temperature. So let's start in the middle this time. Moderate water clarity, moderate temperatures. We're talking about stained water, and we've got a water temperature that's, let's call it 60 to 80 degrees, 60 to 75 degrees, middle of the road. I don't do anything to that. I leave it, right? I leave it just like it is out of the pack. But what if the water gets really dirty and the water gets really warm? We're talking about summertime, 80, 85, 90 degree water temperatures, and especially when the water's dirty, I can make this thing vibrate harder by bending that bill upward, by causing more uh, lip, upward lip on that. And all I do is on this Mullix, and again, this is the Mullix Micro Chatter. If you look at that blade, they call it a shovel blade. I just grab that blade at the bend point. I take my thumb, I hold it against the blade, and I bend it up. I bend it toward the hook, right? Away from the line, toward the hook. I put more bend in that blade. And when I do that, my vibration increases. And that's exactly what we want for dirty water, stained water, and warm water. One last tip, if you're night fishing, if you're fishing at night or under dark conditions, bend that lip up a little bit, really feel the extra vibration in that bait, you're gonna get more bites. Now let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum, which is when do I want a little less vibration? Less vibration, and that is clear water, ultra clean water, and cold water. This is really one of these ones that it's, you know, it's like, man, do I want to really talk about this? But I do, right? This is Mike Iconite Fishing YouTube. We're giving away the secrets. Great tip for cold water winter fishing. I've caught a lot of chatterbait fish in the dead of winter by lessening the vibration. And all we're going to do is that same modification except we're gonna bend the opposite way. So now we're gonna grab it in that bend and instead of bending toward the hook, we're bending away from the hook or toward the line. And we're trying to make that blade flatter, right? We're reducing the vibration by taking the bend out of that blade. And you can really modify it on the fly to get that perfect little subtle vibration. And again, that combined with one of these subtle trailers, thin worm, little tiny fluke minnow style tail, can catch a lot of fish when the water's clean and when the water's cold. So modify that blade to change the vibration, to get more vibration or less just by using a pliers, okay? Some great tips. Let me talk now about the rod reel and line, and I think this is one of the biggest things you can do to get more fish in the boat. You're gonna get the same amount of bites, but I wanna to talk to you about picking the right rod, reel, and line to land more fish, to catch more fish, okay? Let's start with the rod. The biggest mistake I see made with a vibration jig, with a chatterbait, is guys use rods that are too stiff or too soft. In my opinion, the perfect rod action for a chatterbait, for a vibration jig, is a medium action. A medium action. Think about it, right? If we're using a super stiff rod and that fish grabs, starts grabbing the bait and you feel it, when you set the hook, there's no give to that rod tip, and it pulls it away. The same thing can happen with a tip that's too flimsy. If that fish gets the bait, remember, this isn't a crankbait with treble hooks. Look at that, it's got a big single hook on it. Dude, that's got a big gaff hook on it. If we use a rod tip that's too limber, even though the fish get the whole thing in their mouth, we never have the strength to set the hook and to get that big single hook driven home. 
So the perfect action rod, the rod action that you want to pick is a medium action. So look at that bend, right? It's not heavy, heavy action rod. You wouldn't even be able to bend it. It's not soft. I can't make this rod a pretzel. If I put a load on the rod, about 30, 20, 30% of that rod tip has flex to it. But look at the rest of the rod. From here down, backbone, right? 20, 30% of the rod has give. 70, 80% of the rod has backbone. So pick a rod that has a medium action, okay? Uh, I love this one. This is a seven foot medium action power rod by Abu Garcia. It's Ike series. Second tip is reel. Pick a moderate action reel. I see way too many anglers using a super slow reel or a super fast reel. With a super fast reel, 9, 1 to 1, 10 to 1, we're overfishing this bait. We're fishing it too fast. With a super slow reel, we're not able to impart the right action or catch up with the fish. By using a middle of the road, a moderate action retrieve reel, we can power this bait. We have power. We have a methodical ratio to fish this correctly, but enough speed to catch up with the fish that come at you. So the correct ratio for a, a chatter bait, for a, a vibration jig, is middle of the road. Six, six to one to seven to one is perfect. I really love the six, eight to one or the seven to one. It's perfect. This happens to be a, a Abu Garcia Revo Premier, six, eight to one, perfect chatter bait reel. All right, last but not least, we need a line that is middle of the road with stretch, and we need a line that sinks. So important in chatterbait fishing to use a sinking line to get maximum action out of that blade, right? And in our sphere of lines, what's the line that sinks and has a moderate amount of stretch? You guessed it, fluorocarbon. So the line that we want to fish with a vibration jig, it's not braid because braid floats and braid has zero stretch. It's not mono because mono floats and mono is super stretchy, too stretchy. Middle of the road on stretch and a line that sinks, fluorocarbon line. So when we're fishing this chatterbait, go with all fluorocarbon, not braid to flora, not straight braid, not mono, all fluorocarbon. And we're going to use 12 to 20 pound tests, depending on the cover, the environment situation. My favorite chatterbait line, without a doubt, is 12 or 15. And 15, I fish a lot. It's a perfect line for a chatterbait, 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, those three things are going to help you put a lot more fish in the boat. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one, man. It was fun. There's a lot of chatterbait videos out there. But I hope you learned a little more on this one on trailers, modifications, and the tackle to use to catch more fish. Man, if you like these in the shops, do me a favor, stop right now, hit that subscribe button, subscribe to my channel. If you're already subscribed, do me a favor, tell a friend about Mike Iaconelli Fishing, and also hit your notification button. Get that ding every time I have a new video come out trying to make you a better fisherman, trying to teach you some tips and secrets, and uh, trying to help you catch more fish. Talking about the chatterbait, secret tips and modifications. Have a good one. Bye.